I've been working on an original design for several years now. It's uh, Steve Kilger named it the SS1 for Spencer Special One, so I guess that's what we're going to call it. Nothing else is stuck to it. It's a high wing, as you can see, strut braced, tube and rag, fabric covered, tail dragger, single seat. Uh, the object was to uh, make it as light as possible. We're hoping for 550 or less on the empty weight. It's got 90 square feet of wing, 20 feet of wing span. Same as the RV3. Got an RV3 tail on it. The arm for the tail is about the same as an RV3. Hopefully it'll fly as well as an RV3, we'll see. Anyway, I got the, uh, I got a wing in here ready to cover. <clears throat> Thought I'd make a movie of it. There's been some interest in this little airplane. People following it, so we'll uh, show what the inside of the wing looks like. The spars are built up, actually double eagle spars, shortened uh, from 12 feet to 9 feet. Got a 1 8 inch web, quarter inch spruce built up ribs. This thing is a prototype and it shows it in a lot of ways. And I'm an amateur, not an engineer, so that shows up too in a number of ways. We'll start down here at the tip. First thing we get to is an example of amateur stuff. This uh, end plate obviously is going to get all the fabric stretch loads and it'll twist. I knew it would. So I put these little uh, braces on there and that wasn't enough so I came back and added these diagonals and that wasn't enough so I came back and added these well <laughs> it's not elegant and it's not light but it'll work and it's going to be covered up another example of a amateur shade tree type design these are the compression struts right here. There's four of these things on that rib. Here's just a drag wires come into, into the spar at that rib. There's four of those uh, sticks on there to take the compression loads. Well, that's probably gross overkill. You could probably easily get away with two or maybe even one in the middle of the rib. But I didn't have any way to measure that. So I went the overkill way, and I know that'll hold it. I'd like to cut, cut two of them out, but I'll leave them in there. The drag wires are 3 16 chrome molly, cut threads on the ends. They pass through a, through the spar web and into a block. Hey, Rocky. Through the spar web and into a block, glued on the front and back of the spar. This is straight pitch special stuff. Lift strut, strap hinge or strap attachment. Same as a pitch. Most everything, pipers. Here's another example of huh, amateur stuff. Originally, the fabric was going to glue to the tank, okay? and the tank would have taken all the stretch loads. Well, I get to thinking about that and I said, no, nah, if I ever had to take that tank out, then I'm gonna have a big fabric repair job. So it was an afterthought, last minute modification. I glued some plates here on this rib, wrapped the fabric around and glued to that. I put these uh, spreaders in here so it wouldn't be in that rib so bad. The plan now is to bring the fabric over and around this compression strut, and glue it here, and then bring a one bay of fabric over across the top of that and glue it from the tank or from this inside of this rib across the top of this rib. And then it'll all get rib stitched together. That way this little flimsy rib won't be carrying a stretch load on but one bay. That should work. Another example of make do. 
this tank. <laughs> the idea here was to get as much fuel capacity as I could out of the wing bay. So what I do, I made the, the tank the, the airfoil. It didn't get, this doesn't get any cover over it. It's the same shape as a rib. All right, that's a complex tank to build. Joe Engelman built them for me in Kansas City. He's an excellent fabricator. He cut the first two up. The third one, uh, he was satisfied with it. He had to go to 050, mostly because it wanted to warp so bad, but also for uh, strength. It's a big tank. It's got to carry the air loads too, as well as the fuel and the G loads. So uh, that tank ended up nine and a half pounds. If I had to do over again, I would build an in the wing tank I riveted up corners and pro seal. The other thing about this tank, it carrying the air loads, is the mounts have to be uh, sturdy. Enough to carry the load. And that tank there, I figured uh, about 150 pounds of a load at a max gross and four G's. So put 10 screws in it, that makes 15 pounds per screw. That should be fine but it was just more complication and more weight and more work. The uh, drag wires had to go through the tank. Can't see that one. There you go right there. Had to be a tube put in the tank and to get it in exactly the right place, Engelman built the tanks, sent them down here to me, <clears throat> I installed in the wing, and marked exactly where the wires go through it and he cut the holes and put the tubes in there. They're in the right place. But that's a lot of shipping and expense and whatnot. I wouldn't do those tanks again. But they're in there now and they were expensive and I'm going to run them. Okay, we got a, a torque tube uh, aileron control. This is another amateur get up. I was concerned about flutter, so I wanted as big a torque tube as I could get, so it wouldn't be try trying to wrap up. At first, I was going to use a two inch aluminum tube in there. That's what I had it set up for, with Delrin bearings. Well, it turned out I couldn't get it in there. When I started trying to make it all work, I ended up with the tube hitting the fuselage down here. So I went to a one and an eighth 035 chromoly tube. And uh, it's going to be alright. The, uh, let's see here. It works nice and it's smooth. Doesn't have much friction. It's going to be good. Mm -hmm. Alright, we've got three bearings. One, two, three. And we've got two more, four, five, and then down here I end up having to do this thing. So we got seven bearings, and all that stuff had to be in the same in line with one another. That turned into a lot of fussy work. <laughs> when uh, when I originally designed this wing, I set the uh, aileron in one bay trying to keep this torque tube as short as possible to lessen the chances of it uh, twisting and letting that aileron flutter. I had a big nose block in this aileron and three quarter inch holes drilled in it and I was going to fill it full of shot and glue to balance that aileron. Well it turned out the arm from the hinge line to the nose where the lead was going to go was so short it was going to take like four or five pounds of lead to balance it. Well that wouldn't do. So then I had to come up with plan B which is this torque tube out to the wing tip to a plate and a chunk of lead to bolt onto there. And it'll get a little fairing in front of it. Not elegant but it was the best I could do without tearing all this stuff out and redoing. If I had to do it over again, I could build a much lighter, simpler, better wing. But it'll all work. 
That wing weighs uh, 48 pounds, just like it sits, ready for the fabric. That's not too bad. Uh, we'll go with that. We're going to put some rag on it this afternoon. That's an SS1 wing.